What is an ESG risk score? ESG score is an acronym that stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance Score. An ESG risk score gauges a company's performance on ESG issues and exposure to ESG-related risks. They are calculated against a set of ESG metrics and may be expressed on a number scale from 0 to 1, 0 to 10, 0 to 100, or through a letter ranking system such as A to F. The scores themselves and surrounding context fill in the picture of a company's performance on environmental, social, and governance issues. Some scoring reports also even have a controversy ranking, which I find shocking, since one man's controversial company is another man's company that stands by its principles. Who are the ESG rating agencies? Several third-party providers, including agencies and research and analysis firms, evaluate companies on ESG performance and determine independent ESG scores for investment decisions in comparison against peers. Some agencies include Bloomberg ESG Data Services, Corporate Knights Global 100, Sustain Analytics ESG Risk Ratings, Dow Jones Sustainability Index Family, Thomson Reuters ESG Scores, and Rep Risk. What is a good ESG risk score? Methodology, scope, and coverage vary significantly among each agency. Bloomberg and Corporate Knights rate companies on a 100-point scale, for example. Thomas Reuters assigns a score of 0 worst to 1 best, with a corresponding letter grade. Rep Risk measures companies on a Rep Risk index of 0 to 100 and provides a Rep Risk rating of AAA to D. How is data used in the score collected? Well, it's one of two ways. It's either self-reported or it's from publicly available data sets. Depending on the agency, some exclude self-reported data and only rely on publicly available data in order to generate a score. What constitutes the ESG environmental category? Environmental factors range from a company's greenhouse gas emissions to its treatment of animals. Common evaluation criteria include metrics on climate change, soil and water contamination, renewable energy, and environmental policy. What constitutes the ESG social category? Social factors examine a company's business relationships with employees, suppliers, partners, shareholders, and other groups throughout the supply chain. For example, are workers in a factory abroad treated ethically? Do employees earn a living wage? Are facilities regularly inspected and safe to work? Can employees take leave when they are sick or for other personal reasons? Social scores might also reflect charitable contributions, customer interactions, community impact, and policy influence. What constitutes the ESG governance category? Governance criteria evaluate legal and compliance issues in board operations. For example, does the company abide by all local, state, and federal laws? Does company composition represent diverse backgrounds and perspectives? How does executive and non-executive compensation compare to the company's peers? Are all scores public? Some ESG ratings and reports are publicly available. The Dow Jones score, for example, releases world and regional indices on top performing companies annually. Other ratings and reports, such as those from Bloomberg and Rep Risk, are created for investors about companies they want to invest in. Those who are for the continued proliferation and use of ESG scores say organizations with a good ESG risk score are thought to be better equipped to anticipate future risks and opportunities, more inclined to long-term strategic thinking, and to prioritize long-term value creation over short-term gains. Research increasingly shows that companies that adhere to ESG principles are low-risk investments and more resilient over time. For that reason, forward-thinking boards stay informed about their company's ESG issues and activities, the various third-party organizations evaluating their efforts, and their ESG risk scores. This all sounds very wholesome and enlightened, so what could possibly go wrong? Well, let's look at the other side. 
Throughout history, loans for individuals and companies were based solely on the risk of them paying back the loan, not what their views on solar panels or COVID mask mandates were. In fact, they were never based on anything related to their social or political views for that matter. Recent craziness around GameStop stock and the great folks at Reddit have shown many of us that capitalism definitely has some serious issues in regards to a level playing field. But let's put that aside for now and stay focused purely on the ESG score. ESG, in my view, is not enlightenment and information. It is a cage for your mind and your financial freedom. I can easily see ESG being used as just another political tool to wield power over your thoughts and beliefs and force compliance for government-prescribed orthodoxy. Companies with views that are not politically correct will have a low score. Companies produce technology that is not considered progressive, like a gasoline-powered car, will have a low score. Companies that are not charitable to the right organizations at the right moment, depending on the political wins, will have a low score. Companies with a low score will have difficulty getting loans and expanding their business, and will pay higher interest on the loans they're trying to get or currently have. But this score is not just about the score of the companies you invest in. This is the real danger. Consider it guilt by association. If the ESG of all the companies you invest in is, let's say, a 3 out of 10, then guess what? It is very reasonable that the government, investors, or a company that wants to hire you can assume your ESG score would be about a 3 out of 10, assuming that this information becomes public. Is it that hard to believe that a bank or a company could get hold of this ESG score and tell you clearly you are not a big fan of the environment or social justice or government rules during a pandemic that are meant to protect people, so you are not worthy of a job or loan with us at this time. However, go to this other ESG repair agency, and once your score is high enough, then we'd love for you to come back to us. Much like happens today when people try to get a loan and are often pointed to a credit repair agency in order to raise their credit score. Same idea. This is the real danger with this is it could definitely be used and abused for the wrong reasons. As the old proverb says, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I think most people who are in favor of ESGs, their heart and mind is in the right place, and they're trying to provide additional information to investors. However, I am confident that over time, ESG scores will be used to abuse, sanction, and discriminate individual liberty and beliefs. Thanks for watching, and 